Make sure you ping somebody to the room. Make sure you guys on YouTube, what's up? You invite somebody to watch this live stream because we are in for treats. We are in for some incredible value today. Talking about value, today the subject of today's episode is going to be about how to create an offer so good people can't say no. They feel stupid saying no. Now, why would you want to have this? Well, that's a great question. And the reason why I'm going to share with you guys is because I'm studying right now all those things to apply them for my business. Big up to Alex Mosey for making the book and all the great offers that he's made. And that's uh, pretty much an inspiration for this live because let me tell you guys on YouTube, a little quick tip for you guys to retain information, teach it. The best way to retain information is to teach it yourself. So let me share my screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And then seems like we're good. And then I'm going to start my my share, my screen share. Let's go ahead and get started, guys. So how to make an offer so good people feel stupid saying no. King, quick introduction for those who don't know me. My name is Gabriel, Gabriel Julie. I help local businesses get as many customers as they can possibly handle with a revolutionary way of doing online marketing. That's what I'm doing, and that's what I'm focusing on because of my background, but you will know to know me a bit more. I'm the founder of Julie Media and the Julie of, or, and Julie Productions, for those who don't know me, and this is my mission. Now, let's get back to the subject of today's episode. How to make an offer so good people feel stupid saying no. As I told you guys, the inspiration for this book came from a book that I read recently, for this live stream, excuse me, came from a book I read recently, which is $100 million offers. I really recommend you guys checking it out because it's an incredible, incredible value packed book if you want to create offers and actually maybe this is the thing or at least one of the things that you really need to have in your arsenal and i didn't realize that but i'm going to share with you exactly what's the process of how to create a great offer so you can use it for your business you can set in a category of one charge as high of a price as you can possibly do all of that while making sure your customers get more value. If you're interested in that, make sure you stick around and you share the live stream to somebody that needs this and that is interested in growing their businesses while helping more people out. Because that's why, I guess, all entrepreneurs are in for. So make sure you subscribe. New episode every Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So guys, let's go ahead and get started into the first step of today's episode the first session as i like to call it why your business is a commodity that's one of the biggest biggest problems i see nowadays people are always creating businesses by just replicating the things that all that always worked or at least seemed to work but then when they try it out they have oftentimes this approach they go to market and they see somebody that is doing the same thing as they want to do, they aspire to do. And so they get there and they look at the pricing. They're like, mm, okay, because I want to be competitive, I'm just going to drop the price a tiny bit while getting more value, giving more value to the customer. And this process happening at scale, what do you think does that produce? Well, it means that everybody is trying to give more value for a lower price because we think, oh, we got to decrease the price to increase the value, which is not the way we're going to do this today. So stay here because you are not going to have to drop the price. Actually, you're going to be able to make as much money as you can possibly do and help your customers the best, even if you are charging more. To get back to the story, people doing this at scale, which is competing on lowering the price and giving more value, gets an economy that is, okay, a price a race to the bottom, which, which means that when I'm a customer and I'm actually looking to buy your services or, or products, I'm looking at getting your cheaper options because I can compare them. And that's a big problem. That means that your business is a commodity. The customer sees it that way. And so they're just getting to get the cheaper options with the most value they perceive. And that's a problem for a lot of businesses. For example, I'm in the marketing agency online marketing services niche or business, if you want to call it that way. And one of the big things that businesses tell me when I'm prospecting or talking to them, is what makes you different for all the others, those all this agency and all the freelancers that tell me they can give me leads? 
Because let me tell you guys, this is a very lucrative, very lucrative business model. But because of that, there are a lot of people doing it. And that means that the market became so quickly, so quickly and like the service that we are, we started in the first place because nobody was doing it really. It became faster and faster and faster a commodity, which means that when I started in 20, 2015, 2017, that's when I decided to start. This was still, I wouldn't say new. There were definitely some digital marketing agency, but not at the scale at which it developed. Like in three years, it, it became insane. And now it's pretty much one of the standards, which means that there is a lot of competition. And well, everybody seems like they are doing the same thing. So for the customer, they're just going to take the cheaper options. You know, that's how it's going to be. And that's what's happening right now. But I guess that you are in an industry, maybe it's even something that maybe didn't happen as fast, but definitely happened a long time ago. And the process is already ingrained, which, which means that people are already used to getting your own price and checking out the cheapest option. So how can you handle that? Well, there is a solution to that. And let me tell you what it is. There is a solution to do that. The only way for you to be compared to the cheaper option is for you to be able to be compared to it, which means that if the customer see yourself compare and they cannot compare yourself to the competition, even though you sell the same thing, well, they cannot really, you, you then have to define the value that you are selling because we are selling what we call in the category of one. And that's really different because when you're able to do this, all of a sudden the customer doesn't have any references to compare you to something else, which means that then you're free to ingrain all the value that you can possibly do in their mind. Now, there are some different ways to do that, and I'm going to just talk about a few ones. One of the ways that you can do that is first to understand what is the perceived, and when I say perceived, it's really important, perceived value that your your services or products are providing you don't really care about what you're going to provide them you care about what they perceive is the value that you're going to tell them so you tell okay what they're going to get and you make sure that all those things they value you show them that always going back to you sell them what they want and give them what they need even though you're going to do the same thing you're just going to position your message in a certain way that is going to show them oh i want that and this guy in his offer, or this girl, in, his, in her offer, gives it to me. And that's really important. Number two, you got to handle all their problems. All their problems. Meaning that you're losing sales because you're not handling all problems. And there are different examples, different problems you can handle. For example, let's say, let's get to the weight loss, weight loss niche because that's a niche a lot of people can understand. Let's say I'm going into weight loss program. Even though I'm still going to recommend to the client I've got the same exact thing, which is a move more, eat less, basically the same thing for every weight loss program. If I tell you that, you're like, hey, I'm not really that okay to do that because I've got this reason, this reason. I gotta buy new foods. My family is going to get in the way. I it's going to be like highly like high cost and all those things. So let's take those three problems, and there are a lot more. You have to take time to list out every problems that your customer is having, every complaints. And your goal is going to create a solution for every problems they got. For example, let's go back to this example that I just gave you. Number one, I'm going to have to buy healthy food and my family is going to get in the way. Okay, how to make delicious meals for all your family and actually make it healthy meals? Something along those lines. I'm just going to that with uh, with the 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 phrases that's in, that are coming out of my mind. So bear with me. Uh, number two, buying healthy food is expensive. How to, how to buy healthy food a tenth of the price if you can do that of junk food? How to buy healthy food without breaking the bank? That sounds good. And. Your goal is actually to create solutions to each and every one of those problems, meaning that when I'm saying solutions, it can be a bonus, something you throw in your offer. And all of a sudden, now, what did we do? I told you to separate yourself. 
separate yourself from the competition, meaning that already you're positioning yourself as somebody different. Then your offers actually addresses all the problems they got. All of a sudden, now you have a totally different offers to your competition. That's the way you should do it because when you're not being, when the customer is not able to compare yourself with other ones, then all of a sudden they cannot shop. They're just like, okay, is this, there is that thing. I don't know what it is. That's incredible value, but I got to see, does that, does that, does that addresses all my needs? And then all of a sudden, if you're doing a good job about that, handling all the problems, giving them everything they need, then, well, the only choice they've got is to get you because you are the better, the better option. Even though if you are 10 times the price of the competition, you give them everything they need while the others are not convincing that, well, all of a sudden you seem to be the only option for them. And that's the way you should sell. If you guys like this, make sure you share the live stream with somebody that needs this because I know, I know a ton of guys actually need this. Well, actually, I had my, my, my slide screen that's getting a bit moved around, but that's okay, that's okay. Now, let's go into questions. Because I like questions because they are always asking about a specific problem and I want to answer the specific problems with you guys. Even though they're very specific, they're extremely common. And I want to make sure that you guys get every problem handled. So question number one, how can I charge more for my products and services? There is one way to do that. One way to do that and one of the best ways to actually do this is to increase the perceived value. Again, perceived perceived value because it's always going back to what I say, sell them what they want, give them what they need. Because if you're selling them something that they, you know, you got to do, but they don't perceive it as valuable. It's not going to be anything for them. So look for the things that are looking out for the things that they truly value. And then what you do is that you put as many of those things into your offer. That's going to be a way for you to actually create a unique offer that's specifically tailored for your customer. And so, because it's tailored for them, only made for them, you know exactly what their needs and their problems are, and you created something specific for them, you're going to be able to charge a lot more because the perceived value is way higher. Number two, <coughs> my customers keep comparing me to the cheaper alternative. Oh, that's a big one. What should I do? My biggest, biggest tip for you in this situation is to sell in a, com in a category of one. Put yourself in a category of one, meaning that if they're comparing yourself, you're a commodity. For example, this phone is a commodity. Multiple stores got the same exact phone and they're selling it for a different price. And because they are selling the same exact phone, when I'm a customer looking to buy a phone, I'm going to search for a cheaper alternative of the same phone. Okay, on which side is it the cheapest? Cool, I'm buying this one. The problem is that on the other end, if you're the business owner that is obligated to cut in his own ma on margins and that, that is having a business that's barely, you know, breathing and ba barely staying alive. And we don't want that. So what you do is you put yourself in a category of one, meaning that instead of selling a phone, I'm going to niche down. That was if I was selling a phone. I'm going to niche down and let's say I want to sell phones to business owners because that's a market i usually tackle i'm going to sell phones to business owners now i sell the phone that's my main product but in the phone i'm going to add all the best audio books that all the best guys listen to and that are like the books audio books video courses uh real books that actually you need to read if you want to get successful then i also recorded the interview an interview that's only going to be on this phone with a guy that made millions and millions of dollars for, let's say I'm talking to e-commerce entrepreneurs that has created a multi-billion dollar e-commerce e e line of companies. I'm going to give that away for free. And then I'm adding more things that's specifically tailored to them. And because it's so specific and there is only one guy that is doing that thing, well, all of a sudden, look at, look at this. I'm not selling a commodity anymore. I'm selling in a category of one. I niche down. I gave them a ton of value. And I put in a ton of bonuses. And now, all of a sudden, I can put whatever the price I want on this phone. 
let's say it's six hundred dollars. Okay, because of all the bonuses I put it in, man, if I put enough value in that, I can charge ten times the price. Easy, easy, ten times the price. And so that's the way you should do it in order to make sure you're not getting compared to the cheaper alternative. Now, that was a good one. I love this one. Number three, how can this work for me as a B2C company? I see a lot of guys be like, yeah, that may work for like businesses that sell services like B2B, but I'm different. I sell products that you buy and that you just sell. Like I'm a retail. I'm a retail shop. How can I do that? If you're looking for that, that's just a little parenthesis, but if you're looking for ways how to not do shit, well, you're not going to get any results. Always look out for a way for you to make it work for you because you can. Let me, let me give you an example. Let's take Chanel. And now that's another tool which increases value, or maybe not increases value, but we call this scarcity and urgency. Now, those are extremely important pillars to use. Let's take Chanel, for example. There are masses at this. They take only one or two articles and they send them to the shops. Meaning that when you're entering into a Chanel stop, a shop, you only have, let's say you like this bag a lot. You know that there is only one, maybe two in this shop. So if you want to buy it and you're like, eh, I'm going to think about it. Well, it's not going to be here tomorrow. So that puts some urgency for you to buy. But let me tell you something. Chanel and all those guys, well, they are having a high, high, high margins and charging ridiculous prices. For the other reason, because there is scarcity. The urgency aspect was in the stores. Now there is scarcity. What do you think is the value of a shirt you can buy at any, like, any mall or any, anywhere, whenever you want? This is always going to be in stock. How do you see the value of that? Well, like, not a lot. But if I tell you there is only 10 units of this specific shirt and it has been made by, the, by this artist that has died and that his last pencil, like, scratch was on this shirt, damn, all of a sudden, that value is way high. We're still talking about a, a T-shirt, you know, but we use scarcity, urgency, plus... If we are selling that to artists and people are like arts, for example, well, now I've got a way more interesting offer for them. So that's some few takeaways you can get. Rewatch this and make sure you listen to all the things I talk about because I talk about a bunch because there are a ton of aspects that go together. Now, we're done with the questions. Let's go ahead and go over the top three ways to create irresistible offers. I got it three ways, three different ways to create irresistible offers. If you use those for your business, you're going to see incredible results. Number one way to create irresistible offers, set in a category of one. I already talked about that multiple times, but it's so important. I'm going to still say it again for a simple reason. When you're able to put yourself differently in another category, you will be able to win because nobody will, will be able to compare you with the other offer. And what do I mean by selling in a category of one? Oftentimes, it means to niche down. I gave an example with this phone, meaning that if I wanted to sell this phone and I just wanted to sell it to everybody that wants to give money for this phone, I will have to compete with every other phone resellers. And it's going to be a race to the bottom, which means that I'm going to have to sell this phone for the lowest price for me to sell as many phones as possible. The problem with that is, well, I'm going to cut into my own margin. That's not good because I want to make money, not sell, not sell things in the air, you know? So a great way for you to do that is actually to reposition yourself. Oftentimes, and I was against this concept for a long time, but this made me realize that I had to do it. A biggest thing that you can do is to change your mind. The most important, the most difficult thing actually to do. And... One of the things that you could do if you are selling a phone, so that's a perfect example because a phone, like, it's a commodity. If you, you, can, you work if, you're, if you are selling phones, if you are selling dumbbells, whatever it is that you are selling, whatever it is that you are selling, you just have to change your way and dive deeper into a market, niche down. Let's say I sell this phone. I took the example of the entrepreneur, but let's say, who needs a phone oftentimes? Let's say I sell this phone to salespeople. Okay, so I'm going to sell this phone to salespeople and 
what I'm going to do that, I'm going to add a lot more things to that. So I'm going to add software that helps them to dial faster. I'm going to add um, VPN servers so they can put themselves, I don't know, I'm going to put as much value in this phone as possible. So in that way, because I'm selling into one category and so that makes me different. Number two, I'm putting as much value in that phone as possible. That makes me even more different. And what that does is that not only I'm selling in a category of one, so customers cannot compare my, me to other options. So they're like, oh, because I'm a sales guy, I look at this phone, it's, good. it's really good. Like it's really, really good. And that makes me able to charge more for my services on my phone in that situation. So that's way number one. Number two, increase the perceived value. Perceived is extremely important to understand because you don't really want to increase value because value for you means nothing for your customer. Always increase what they want to see and what they perceive as valuable, which means that you got to look at what they perceive as valuable, what they think is the thing they want, always going back to that. Give them what they want sell them what they need. And that's extremely true because if you're trying to sell them all the services that you're going to do, for example, let's say I'm selling you marketing services, okay? That's going to be good. Like, listen to this. I'm going to do Facebook ads for you and then I'm going to manage all those ads and, and, um, and yeah, manage all, create the campaigns, put the ad sets in the campaigns and then the campaigns in the creatives and I'm going to test different creatives for you and do different headlines, different videos. Like, if you're listening to this and being honest, you don't give a crap about what I just said. What is the, ver the thing they, they value? I want more leads, I want more sales. I'm going to give you as many customers as you can possibly handle. Sign right here. That's it, you know. And those things are the things they value. I've often said, don't sell the features, sell the benefits. That's exactly this. Don't sell the things that you're going to do. Sell them the things that they want. Even though you know you're going to do that thing, they don't give a shit. They just want to know if that thing that you do, you don't even have to tell them what you're going to do. If the thing you pretend you're going to do is going to give them the results. They just care about the results. They don't really know, even, they don't really, even really want to know how you're going to do it. They just want to know, can you give me the results I want? Can you achieve my dreams? And can you give me the certainty that you can achieve that, that dreams? That's extremely important. There are different ways to create value. Help the different ways. Number one, does this achieve my dream outcome? Making more money, getting more deals, losing some weight, whatever it is. Number two, can you give me full certainty that this is going to work? How can you increase that value? Because that's important. If they, if they know it can give you them their dream outcome, but they're not really sure that you can give them their dream outcome, well, it decreases the value for them. For example, let's compare, and that actually makes a difference between uh, in the end price of, of things. Let's compare gym memberships and liposuctions. Incredible example. Gym memberships, you maybe sign up, you know, you get there. If you get there, you got to eat a lot, uh, the right way. You got to work out a lot, lose sometimes. You got to look like a freak when people are going to ask you for going out on a restaurant. And you're like, no, because I'm on a diet. Okay. Eh. How much is a, a, a gym membership? I don't know, like $20 a month, maybe. I don't know. What's the price for you guys in the US or whatever is the place that you're in the world? Liposuctions. One afternoon, maybe one or two weeks or so, but you, you wake up thin. What's the price of a liposuction? Way more than a gym membership because I'm certain it, it, the, the certainty aspect is, hey, is this surgeon actually good at doing it? That increases the certainty if I've got testimonials, if I've got, like, this is a renowned clinic. If I can show them that they're going to get the results. Now, you can also do that with guarantees, which is one thing I'm going to go and use further, but increasing certainty or getting their results is extremely important. Number three, now, there are some things you want to get away from, or at least get the least amount of number, and that's also to increase value. Number three is the time that going to, it's going to take to get them the results they want. 
Meaning the average outcome, how fast can you do it? Getting back to the gym example, maybe it's going to take you a month, maybe a year or two to get the dream body that you want. Liposuction is going to take you one afternoon. No. So all of a sudden, the, dream, the, the perceived value is way, way, way higher. And that's extremely important. The, the, one of the things that is that beats free is doing it fast. If you're able to take something in the market and doing it the faster way, well, you oftentimes make a lot of money. Let's take, for example, uh, on-demand TV, beats TV all day, Netflix. You want to watch a series? Oh, I got to wait until it, something good goes on TV. Okay, put your Netflix and you can watch whatever you want, whenever you want, and like instantly. Things like that. If you, one of the best ways to beat low price, even free, is to go fast. Uber, Uber example. Yeah, walking is free. Hey, order an Uber, you can get faster where you want. The car as well. Car is an exact same example. You know, it's always about increasing that perceived value. That's extremely, extremely important. Now, let's go into number three. Handle all their concerns. Or each and every one of them. Take some time to list out all the customer's concerns so you can handle each and every one of them because oftentimes you're losing sales because concerns are not handled. And if you're able to handle all of them, all of a sudden your offer is irresistible because, well, they have nothing to tell you. Like, hey, man, I, I don't know. Like, it's too perfect to be, even be true. Let me, like, take my credit card. That, that's one of the things that, if I can give you an example, I'm going to bound that with the next tip, the bonus tip. Use guarantees to your advantage. Going back to handling all the concerns, you can use guarantees to actually handle concerns. For example, one of the big problems that we have as uh, marketing agencies, and I'm giving you, like, if you're a marketing uh, a guy that owns a marketing agency, listen to this, it's going to change the way you do business and makes you millions. Let me, let me tell you that. One of the big problems that we have as marketing agencies is that people are not sure we're going to give them the results. Also, one of the, I think the number one concern, they're not sure they're going to see results. I can use a guarantee to actually make them sure that well, and we need to get results. Now, you're going to dial in the numbers to make sure it works for you. But let me give you an example. You pay me $4,000 up front, and then you never pay me again until I get you a customer. That's my guarantee, which means that until I get you a customer, you don't pay me ever again. And then you go on the retainer. That's a guarantee. What else can you use as a guarantee? You can use... Conditions guarantee, let's say, and that's something that we also have. The second problem we've got as, as a marketing agency is that, okay, we can give them results, but we still need them to stay as long as possible with us because it takes some time for some clients to get started and to start seeing some results and get the ball rolling because we have to set up all the ads, test out the, the market and how it responds. So then we can adjust and set, okay, those are the ads that are working and then go down full in it. Second problem we often got is, okay, we got to make sure our clients stay as long as possible with us at least three months to six months so we can start seeing some results. Now, one of the ways that most marketing agencies do that is that they sign three months minimum. But like, if I'm, if I'm a client looking at this and I'm like, eh, three months minimum, I don't really like this idea because all of a sudden you're like, yeah, don't want to get stuck with a contract, all those things, you know, no problem. You can use a guarantee to kind of shift the process. Let me tell you something that you can use. Okay. If you stay on for six months, that's a conditional guarantee, which means that they have to fill up certain conditions. For example, you give, you give us all the ad uh, creative we need. You were, you were reach out, we were able to reach out to you. We were able to adjust the things that you give conditions. We spent X amount of ad spend into those ads. And with all the conditions you listed, if we didn't got you, if you're not satisfied with our services, in the next six months, we give after six months, you we give you your money back plus 20% of the ad spend, which means that what worst case scenario, we work with you, brought you some clients. Even if we did the worst job ever, we still brought you some clients, plus you got clients at a discount because we ran the ad for you. You know, that's a way to actually encourage them. Oh, I'm going to stay on six months because I'm actually going to be able to benefit from this. Plus, if you use those conditions to actually make them do the things that you need them to do, you're going to have way better customers that are actually going to stay with you. 
And let me tell you something. If you're doing things like this, guarantees, of course, it has to make sense on paper with the numbers. But one of the great things that, well, that is important to realize is that even though if you are going to get some refunds, you may get some. But one of the things that you got to realize is that the increase in sales is way worth the refunds. Oftentimes, you got to make sure it works on paper, as I just told you, but that's the way you should go about it. Now, somebody is just ringing up the door. They're going to have to wait because I'm going to go dive deep into the process. You know, if you have been a long time listener to this show, you know that I always like to go into processes and ways for you guys to actually implement and get some cool stuff. Now, let me share with you the process that I'm going to dive deeper in with you guys today. How to create an offer so good you can't handle it, man. That's going to be a step-by-step -step process, giving you exactly what you need to do in order to see results and create an incredible offer. Because I don't want you to be broke. I want you to make as much money as you possibly can and help out as many people as you can possibly do. And the problem with that, the fact that you don't have a great offer is that, well, you have to go and sell your products for a crappy price, which means you're not making money. You cannot... You cannot take care of your customers and spoil them and give them, give them things and improve your services, your products. You cannot do that because you don't have the funds necessary to do that. So you charging less is doing a disservice to your customers in every way possible. So I want you to charge more because they're going to be way more committed, they're going to get better service, better products, a better job, and they're going to see the value. Now, in order to do that, you got to do certain things in order to get to that level, let me share with you those certain things I'm talking to you about. Number one, that's more of a before step, you know, before you start the process. Market check so you don't break yourself. Meaning that if you have a market that is not able to pay you, that has not enough pain, that is not able to be targeted easily, and that is not growing, you're going into an opportunity that's going to be extremely hard for you to make money, even though you have a great offer and you're good at persuasions. There are three aspects that you got to understand. Number one, and the first I'm going to say is the most important, and then it gets decreases, decreasingly less important, which means that the market is more important than the offer, and the offer is more important than your ability to persuade them, which means that if you have a crap market, but you are good at the two others, you're not going to get as a ton of money because they, they're not able to pay for your services. They are not paying for it. Number two, if you're in an okay market and you're okay at persuasions, but you have an incredible offer, you're going to make a ton of money. And that's the thing. Even though you are, you are in a good market and you have a great, great offer, but you are, even if you're bad at persuasion, you're still going to make some money. And so that's the thing you got to understand about offers. Now, to do that, you got to make sure that your market is good. As I told you, there are four steps to understand if you want to see if the market is good. Number one, are they hungry, looking for your solution? Maybe not what you propose as services, but the advantage that it gives to them. Because I'm sure in my industry, nobody is looking for Facebook ads and leads or somebody to handle our campaigns. What they're really looking for is for more money. Are business owners looking for more money? Yes. Oh, yeah, they are. And they want it hard. So the market is hungry. Number two, are they able to pay? Yes, they are. Oh, yeah, they are. They've got a ton of money and they want to make a ton more. Number three, are they easy to target? Extremely, yes, they're extremely easy to target. And number four, is this a growing market? Of course. Like if you see the, the S&P 500, like, the stock, the stock market is like rising 9% every, every year or so. So businesses are getting more funds. Of course, some of them are dropping out. Some of them are getting in. But globally, business like businesses are getting better. Now, I'm taking a general example. I would have to go that into my niche to give you a more specific example, but you get the idea. It's the same thing for you. Now, check your market before you wreck yourself. Um, trust, trust me, it's going to save you a lot of headache down the road. <laughs> Number two, increase the value. And you're going to increase the value with different means. Number one, show them, and I'm talking extremely specific, remember this, specifically, like 
perceived value. Perceived value is extremely important as a keyword. It's not what you value, what you're going to do to them. It's what, okay, does this give me what I need or what I want? Okay, so extremely important. Number one, does it give them their dream outcomes? Do they want money? Do they want fame? Do they want getting more love? Or do they want a better body, a better physique? What do they really want? What is the dream outcome? Number two, how certain do you make them getting this, uh, the, the, that result? So those are the two things that are positive that you should be working on. But there are two other things that are more important, actually, in that if you're able to leverage those, they get more powerful than you should be able to show. Because that's what everybody's doing. Oh, this is the best product. They are trying to, you know, convince the customer that is going to give them that dream outcomes. Oh, oh they have all the testimonials trying to make them get sure, okay, this is going to work. But they are not working on the two others that I'm going to tell you. Number, number three is the time. How fast can you get, to, get it to them? How fast can you get it to them? And number three, how frictionless is it going to be? How easy is it going to be? Those are the two things. And if you can work on those three and on those two, it's going to differentiate you a ton from your competitors. So that's how you can create value. And the more you are able to tap into that and then look all their problems, which is the next step, list all their problems and transform, it, and transform them into solutions. Let's say, let's say you are, let's, let's keep it into, into the weight loss programs. I don't want to go to the gym because I don't want people to look at me weird when I'm going to the gym because I don't know how to do exercise. Okay, I get it, no problem. How to, the perfect workout plan so you don't look like, uh, so you don't look super in the gym and so you don't, have any risks of injuries? That's another one. Let me let me give you another example. Let's keep it into the the gym thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to feel sore after getting into the gym, and you, like that's the most important thing. When you don't, you have to realize that those are the things that are getting you not getting sales actually because you're not handling all the problems. If you are able to handle all the problems, all of them in your offer, there's no reason to say no. No reason. You got to make sure that I have no reason to tell you no. So example number two, yeah, I don't want to feel soft on the gym. Stretching exercises guide that gives you all the exercises so you not you do not feel so after your workouts. Yeah, I, I don't want to I don't want to take on diet because I'm going to have to, I'm not going to be able to get to go into restaurants and eat the things I really love. How to eat the things you love, even if you are eating at other places, restaurants, even if you are traveling. And still lose weight. You basically transform all the problems with a how-to and the solution. You flip it on its head, and that's going to be the way. If you're handling it in your offer with something, that's going to be the best way for you to actually make some money and to make the money. Number four, add guarantees, bonuses, urgency, and scarcity. Those are extremely important. Those are the things that will give you the upper edge. When you are when you are able to handle all the all their problems, you can use guarantees, as I previously talked about, for example. Guarantees are extremely good because let's say they have, they have a fear that they are not going to get the results. That's a problem that we see as marketing agency. They're like, yeah, I don't want to be stuck on a contract for three months because I don't like contracts. No problem. If we don't give you the results after three months, we give you like two times your money and 20% of your aspen, which means that you're going to actually make a profit by getting our services. Number two, you're going to get more customers at a discount. Visa, MasterCard, America Express, and you ask for the clothes. But you see how I handle and use that problem, that uncertainty they've got. Not certain, they're going to get the dream outcome. And I flipped it on this ad and actually used a guarantee to use this reason to close. You see how it is? And that's all their problems, all the doubts they've got. Use those, those things, and guarantees can be one of them, to use it as a solution. Now, number two, you can use bonuses as well. And oftentimes, bonuses, the more bonuses you put in it, the better. And those bonuses should be basically like the, those things that you listed that complements your offer, those will be your bonuses. And all, all the important thing is that you can, and that's like kind of an advanced way of using bonuses. If you are able to 
use bonuses that fix problems that comes after they use your services or your product for a certain amount of time. So let's say, hmm, let's say I'm into, that, that's one of the, let, let's, that's an idea on top of my mind. Let's say I'm into, personally, I'm into helping local businesses to scale using online marketing. And let's say that first step they've got, is I got them tons of customers and they got a ton of money with it. Cool. Now, next problem is how do I up, like how do I fix my operations so I can actually handle the flow of customers because I can I can attain only a certain number of customers. Maybe one of my bonuses is actually, hey, here's a free guide of how you can make sure that you can handle all those customers and implement a few things that you can use in your situation, specifically made for local businesses like you, of how you can have simpler operations, better processes and use other tools to handle all this new clientele and make as much money as possible. You see, I'm handling the pro uh, problem that's going to come later, which means that when you're a customer, you're like, oh, this guy is speaking about the long term and actually I've got everything I need to then get the results that I need and get that problem, that problem fixed. That's kind of a ninja way to use bonuses. That, now you have urgency and discussion. Those are extremely important because they increase the perceived value. Urgency. Hey man, this is only going to be available for a certain amount of time. That's that's one of the things that is, like cracks me out of laugh the, the most with marketing campaigns. If you if you check out the number of registrations or sales at campaigns that have an end date, like 60% of the sales actually end up being done in the last hours, like two, three hours before the thing closed. That's crazy. So adding scarcity and urgency is extremely important. Now, the scarcity aspect is that. It's just a play of supply and demand. And if you're able to manipulate it, that's extremely, extremely good. And you can use that to your advantage. And so that's one of the tools. That, well, those are the tools that you can use. Now, guys, make sure you check out the special, special. That's this week's special only. And guys, registration are closing in and I don't have a lot of seats available. To be honest, I have less than 100 seats on this thing. So I want to make sure you grab it. This is the special Entrepreneur Success Summit for every business owners that want to turn next their businesses this year without wasting time on finding the right strategy because of all the gurus they told you, oh, this is the thing, this is the thing, you got to do this and that. I want you to stop looking around and start doing the right things. So let's go ahead and click this link, Gabriel Juliet, no, juliamedia.com forward slash summit juliamedia.com forward slash summit hurry up though because i'm only going to run this one time it's going to be monday may the 9th 11 a.m eastern standard time 11 a.m central time excuse me and i have less than 100 seats available i think we're getting close on to the less than 90 seats available actually so make sure you get one asap that's juliamedia.com forward slash summit Make sure you get it. Now, let's go ahead. Let's go and talk about what we just talked about today. Number one, you got to have an irresistible offer. And that is your fast lane to making a stupid amount of money. If you're in a good market, or even an okay market, and you have an incredible offer, even if you don't know how to sell your products, even if you're extremely bad, your offer is going to do all the heavy work for you. Be best example, toilet papers. With COVID, and right now I'm seeing that in France. The let me get take you something. Let me show you something. This oil, the sunflower oil in France right now, because of everything that's happening in Ukraine and Russia, those are big suppliers of um, sunflowers in our in Europe. I don't know if that's the same thing in the world, but it's extremely hard to get a bottle. We have to like supermarkets have to limit the amount of bottle they sell they sell per family. And so right now, everybody is going crazy about it, you know? And that's, an, that's a show of like, hey, where even if you're in a okay or bad market and you're off in the city, like uh, even like if the, you're not, they're not selling it. They're just like, yeah, we don't even want to sell it to you. The offer is good because, well, supply and demand, urgency and scarcity. Oh, I, I'm not going to have it. Everybody's going crazy about it. So the offer makes everything, all the lift work for you. All the heavy lift work. Now, number two, selling the category of one. 
if you're able to differentiate yourself from the competition and niche down and sell to only one person and one avatar only while giving them a solution that handles all their problems, well, you're into the money-making machine, my friend. Number three, handle all their concerns, all of them, all the concerns they perceive they have, give a solution to them in the offer. And if you're able to cover all of them, they have no reason to tell you no. Now, make sure, again, I have less than 100 seats, and I think we're getting close on less than 90 seats available on my special Entrepreneur Success Summit that is going down this Monday, 11 a.m. East uh, Central Time. I'm going to get it. 11 a.m. Central Time, Monday, May the 9th. I have less than 90 seats available. Entrepreneur Success Summit. Make sure you go and click the link, juliamedia.com forward slash summit. Guys, I see you on the summit. I count on you. I count on you. I want to make sure I see you there because I'm going to invite all the best entrepreneurs out there so you can actually have the only strategies that you gotta that you gotta apply. That's something I struggled for a long time. I was looking up for the right solutions to my specific problems. The problem was that, well, <laughs> every guru would tell you to do that thing, that thing, and well, you get confused. I just want to give you all the guys and the gals you need that are experts and that are going to give you the only things you should apply so you can start getting some results right away. So make sure you go and grab this opportunity. Less than nine seats available. And I'm only going to run this one time. It's this Monday, May the 9th, 11 a.m. Central Time. And the link is Media dot com forward slash summit i see you there be great and make sure you craft an incredible offer